Hello, Derek Rapp here again, providing another instructional video in the Mile High Flood District's Detention Basin Design Workbook. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to override the default storage volumes for Zones 1 through 3, and how to enter a user-defined stage area volume relationship that provides the corresponding volume. The example in this video involves an extended detention basin that is sized to over-detain the 100-year storm event with a reduced discharge rate in order to compensate for an adjacent facility that does not provide 100-year detention. If you are new to the detention workbook, I suggest you watch the overview and example videos first to get an introduction to the entire workbook. This volume override video is broken into several chapters as seen here in the table of contents. If you move the cursor over the video timeline at the bottom of the screen, the various chapter segments are visible. I will start this video by describing a hypothetical watershed which will require two separate detention facilities, and we will override the zone volumes for one of them to compensate for the other. The hypothetical 15-acre watershed consists of two subcatchments that drain to separate outfalls in the same receiving stream. The larger 12-acre subcatchment A drains to an on-site extended detention basin that will provide the required storage for the water quality capture volume, excess urban runoff volume, and 100-year detention volume. The smaller 3-acre subcatchment B drains to a second on-site extended detention basin that will provide the required storage for the water quality capture volume and excess urban runoff volume but does not provide the required 100-year detention volume due to site constraints. In order to address this issue, the extended detention basin for subcatchment A will include an enlarged 100-year detention volume with a reduced 100-year allowable release rate to compensate for the 3-acre subcatchment that does not provide 100-year flood control. In order to determine the additional storage volume and reduced release rate required, the detention workbook was used to size the smaller extended detention basin in subcatchment B for the water quality capture volume and excess urban runoff volume. I will briefly show the results from the detention workbook for subcatchment B. The excess urban runoff volume was calculated at just over one tenth of an acre foot. The workbook also calculated an approximate 100 year detention volume of just over two tenths of an acre foot. Therefore, the additional flood control volume that was not provided in zone three was approximately one-tenth of an acre foot. This additional storage volume will be added to the extended detention basin in subcatchment A to compensate. The extended detention basin outlet structure for subcatchment B was sized to control the release rate of the water quality capture volume and excess urban runoff volume through an orifice plate while the 100-year storm passes over an emergency spillway undetained. The 100-year peak discharge rate through the spillway was calculated as 5.3 cubic feet per second approximately 2.1 cubic feet per second higher than the 100-year pre-development peak flow rate of 3.2 cubic feet per second. Therefore, the pre-development peak flow rate for subcatchment A will be reduced by 2.1 cubic feet per second. Please note that for purposes of this hypothetical example, the travel time between the two outfall locations is relatively short, and peak discharges are small compared to the receiving stream, so we are simply shifting the allowable release rate between the two locations. However, in more complicated situations, it is recommended that a hydrologic routing model such as SWIM be used to confirm that the downstream peak flows do not exceed pre-developed conditions. Now we can move on to sizing the extended detention basin for subcatchment A and discussing how to override the zone volumes. I have already provided the watershed information for the 12-acre residential subcatchment A and run CUHP. The program has calculated the default water quality capture volume, excess urban runoff volume, and approximate 100-year detention volume. In this example, we are going to stay with the program calculated water quality capture volume and excess urban runoff volume values. However, if there is a justifiable reason to modify these values, the preferred method is to override them by entering new values in the cells to the right. Next, we will discuss how to enter user-defined zone volumes. In this example, there is a desire to over-detain by providing additional 100-year storage volume to compensate for subcatchment B, which does not provide 100-year detention. First, we need to scroll down to the zone volume selection cells. In this example, we are going to select water quality capture volume for zone 1. Please note that if you want to override the water quality capture volume, that should be done in the override cell above and not by selecting user defined from this pull down list. For zone 2, we will select excess urban runoff volume minus zone 1. For zone 3, we are going to select user defined minus zones 1 and 2. You may notice that the adjacent cell has turned blue to indicate it will accept the user input and a user override value can be entered. In this cell, we are going to provide an override value for the zone 3 volume that is equal to the approximate 100-year detention volume calculated above, plus the 100-year detention volume that was not provided in the subcatchment B detention basin. We can enter the user-defined zone 3 volume as an equation directly in the cell. 
Keep in mind, this input value is only the incremental zone three volume and is therefore equal to the approximate 100 year detention volume minus the sum of the zone one and zone two volumes. We can then add the additional one tenth of an acre foot to compensate for the lack of a zone three volume in the subcatchment B detention basin. As a check, we can confirm that the total detention volume is equal to the approximate 100 year detention volume plus the additional subcatchment B volume. The next step is to define the basin geometry. Preliminary basin geometry can be achieved by providing the geometry constraints below and letting the program develop a stage area relationship. However, in this example, we will demonstrate how to enter a user-defined stage area relationship into the workbook. This relationship may be available from proposed grading plans or it may reflect survey information obtained from an existing detention basin. If you only know the stage volume relationship, the user tips and tools worksheet can help to convert the stage volume relationship to an approximate stage area relationship. For this example, I have already developed a stage area relationship that accommodates the additional 100 year storage volume not provided for in subcatchment B. The proposed detention basin has a maximum depth of 10 feet and a maximum area of approximately 14,600 square feet. The extended detention basin was designed to accommodate the approximate 100 year storage volume of 0.96 acre feet at a stage of 8 feet. We can simply copy and paste these stage and area columns into the detention workbook one at a time. Once all of the stage and area values have been entered, the stage volume relationship is automatically calculated. If we look back at the basin geometry section below, we can see the new cells all show a value of user to indicate that the user has overridden the program generated basin geometry. We have now completed the basin worksheet and are ready to move on to the outlet structure worksheet. The first thing we want to do on the outlet structure worksheet is override the pre-development peak flow rate in order to reduce the release rate and compensate for the lack of detention in subcatchment B. To enter the override pre-development peak flow rate, we need to scroll down to the routed hydrograph results table. The 100 year pre-development peak discharge for subcatchment A is 12.5 cubic feet per second. This value will be reduced by 2.1 cubic feet per second, resulting in a new value of 10.4 cubic feet per second. This reduction will help match the downstream peak discharge by compensating for subcatchment B release rates. As you can see, once the value is entered in the override cell, it is automatically highlighted to ensure reviewers are aware of the modified value. The final step is to size the outlet structure to match the desired water quality capture volume drain time and release the 100 year design storm at 90% of pre-development levels. I have already completed the iterative sizing process and will now walk through the results. The outlet structure consists of an orifice plate to control the release rate of the water quality capture volume and excess urban runoff volume in zones one and two. The zone three outlet type consists of an overflow weir, drop box with grate, and an outlet pipe with restrictor plate. The water quality orifice plate was designed with three one inch diameter openings. A three foot by three foot drop box with a type C grate was designed to drain through an 18 inch outlet pipe with a restrictor plate covering approximately two thirds of the pipe height. An eight foot wide emergency spillway was designed to sit just above the estimated 100 year storage depth of eight feet. If we look at the routed hydrograph results table, we see that the water quality capture volume drain time is 40 hours and the five year drain time is less than 72 hours. We can also see that the outlet structure design releases the 100 year design storm at 9.3 cubic feet per second, which is 90% of the override pre-development peak flow of 10.4 cubic feet per second. If we compare this reduced release rate to the original subcatchment pre-development peak flow rate of 12.5 cubic feet per second, we see it is only 75% of the original value. The 100 year maximum pounding depth is 7.77 feet with a maximum volume stored of approximately 0.92 acre feet. This is consistent with the estimated values of 8 feet and 0.96 acre feet used to develop the user override stage area relationship. That concludes this design example. I hope this video is helpful in understanding how to enter and interpret user overrides for zone volumes in the stage area relationship. Be sure to check out the other instructional videos available.